Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lanyelle Kuzar, and I'm the owner of Yes Event Decor and More. So this past weekend, I helped to decorate for a birthday party. The theme was all black affair, and I was a little bit nervous because the client wanted me to use mainly black, okay? She wanted just a little bit of white and some silver, but really she wanted to use black. So this was my first time doing an all black event, all right? So let's get into the setup. In this video, I'm also gonna get into how I transport my shimmer wall because I get so many questions on that. So in this video, I made sure to walk you through how I transport my shimmer wall and put it into my U-Haul, all right? So let's get started. All right, so I wanted to stop here to show you the shimmer wall so far, okay? So what me and my son did was we used the zip ties to create two pieces, all right? So this piece right here, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. It's six panels wide. So here's the six panels, okay? And then it's three panels high, okay? Now each of these panels is about 12 inches wide and 12 inches tall, just a little bit less than that. So this piece right here is about six feet wide and three feet tall, okay? And then as you can see right here to the left, I have another piece, okay? So I built two pieces. Each of them are six panels wide and three panels tall. And this is what I'm going to transport to my client. Now, I have extra panels. I'm gonna show you right here. I have extra panels in this bin. I'm not going to put these together yet. I'm gonna do that at my client's house because I'm not sure how tall her ceilings are. So now I'm gonna pick up these two pieces of the shimmer wall and put it in the van.
So here's the second piece of my shimmer wall. I'm just laying it on top of the first piece. And as you can see, I'm just putting curtains. I have some old curtains in my house. I'm just putting some curtains in between the layers. And you wanna make sure that you're putting a curtain over the top of the shimmer wall as well because you don't want your balloons to pop, okay? Now, let me show you something I just noticed. So on the left side of my U-Haul, you see these pieces of wood? I just thought to myself, I can get some hooks from Home Depot or maybe from Amazon, and then maybe I can just hang the shimmer wall. So stay tuned for that.
that was the all black affair. Let me know in the comments, what did you think? I was so nervous about using mostly black because you know that black is so dark, right? But thank goodness my client had that ring light down in the basement. So that really helped to light up the room. All of the decorations, like they all looked great. So before someone asked me, because I know someone is going to ask, I did not provide those table decorations. I think my client did that herself. And she went to Party City and got those black balloons that were on the ceiling, okay? So the only thing that I provided for this event was the balloon backdrop, um, the neon sign, and the throne chair, because I know someone is going to ask. But I think everything looks so nice together. And because my client had that ring light, I was able to get some really good pictures, all right? So let's get into the lessons learned because of course I have some for you. The first lesson that I have is this was the first time I used these balloons. They're called black agate balloons. So I'm gonna blow these up for you. Give me just a second, we'll blow this up for you. All right, so this is how the balloons look and I love them. I love the way that they look, but they do have a strong chemical like odor to them. It smells to me like gasoline, like something is burning. And I guess maybe that comes from, you know, the pattern or whatever dye that they use on these balloons. So just so you know, if you order these, and I got these from Qualitex, if you order them, just know you may want to wear a mask or something and warn your clients too that, you know, they have a scent to them. Another big lesson that I learned with this event is that I'm going to have to start asking my clients when they're having events in their house, I'm going to have to start asking about their entryways and I may have to ask them to start measuring their entryways. So me and my son, when we were bringing in that throne chair, we had a hard time. The client um, originally said that we can bring the throne chair through the house and then go down the stairs to the basement, but the stairway was not wide enough for us to do that. And then also on the stairway, there were these built-in cabinets and on the cabinets, they had china, right? Like I did not feel comfortable bringing my throne chair down a stairwell that had these fragile items on it, right? Because, you know, if something happens and I damage that, then I'm liable, right, to have to replace their fine china. So what we ended up having to do was find another entrance directly through the basement, but we had to go like downstairs and it was a, it was a narrow stairwell. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm not gonna force it, right? If I can't get this throne chair down these stairs, then I'm just gonna have to give the client a refund because I don't wanna damage you know, my throne chair trying to get it to this event. So that was a huge lesson learned for me. Whenever someone is having an event in their house, I'm gonna ask them you know, about their entryways and I'm gonna make sure I measure my throne chair to see how wide I need the entryway to be, right? because I don't wanna book a client and then get to the event and find out, well, I can't even bring this throne chair into their house. And here's my third lesson learned with this event. And this is one, again, that all year I've been, I've been thinking about. So when it comes to birthday parties, right, there's usually a DJ and that DJ plays music for adults if it's an adult birthday party. And as you guys know, my son comes with me to help decorate. And my son is not an adult. I think because he's so tall, people think that he's older than what he really is. And so there are times when the DJ is coming and to, you know, they're setting up and they start playing music and 
a lot of the music is inappropriate for my son because he's not an adult. You know, I remember when I first started this business, my son was 12, you know, and I would have to take him with me when I was setting up. And then the DJ would come and start, you know, playing music. And it's like, <laughs> I'm trying to rush my son out of there because the music, you know, is inappropriate for his age. He's not an adult. And so what I have realized is that when it comes to adult birthday parties, I need to be in there and out of there before the DJ starts setting up. Because every single time, I mean, it happens, it's happened so much this year that when the DJ comes in and they're starting to play, you know, the music that's on the radio, you know, and they don't play the clean version, right? They're playing the album version that may have curses and explicit language in it, as soon as the DJ comes in, I'm like trying to rush through what I have to do to get me and my son out of there. So what I'm gonna start doing is just asking my clients, what time is the DJ going to be there so that I'm planning around that because there's just some music that I don't allow my son to listen to and really I don't listen to it. So I just don't want to be uncomfortable. You know, I want to make sure that I'm giving my client my best, you know, and I don't want to rush through because, you know, of the music that's playing. All right, guys. So those were my lessons for this event. Some pretty big lessons that I took away. If you guys have any questions on the materials that I use, please make sure you check the description of this video. I'll put the links in there. If you have any other questions, please let me know and I'll see you in my next video.